Did you know that women have been excluded from clinical trial research in healthcare until the late 90s? So women's health is underrepresented. The implications of excluding women from clinical health trials is basically that you're excluding one huge portion of the world population. Did you also know what is orgasm gap? It is the disparity of the sexual satisfaction between women and men. Research has shown that during sexual intercourse, less than 30% of women reach orgasm on average, while more than 80% of men reach orgasm. 30% of women are having orgasms. There's a huge pleasure gap that no one's really addressing because no one knows. And the reason why no one knows is because no one talks about it. It's very often a very taboo to talk about, you know, sex. Women, especially in Asia, they don't realize that they can take control of their, their own health and well-being. They don't realize that they are the ones that are empowered to ask for more. Women are you know, globally known or historically known to ask to suppress themselves or to not really question too much. Everything that is given to them should be, in a way, grateful, like they should feel the gratitude towards that. This is why, since 2016, we have seen the emergence of a new category of industry called femtech, also known as female technology. The definition of femtech is products, services, diagnostics, any kind of technology um, that is aimed towards bettering women's health and women's uh, well-being. It was coined in 2016 by a Danish founder called Ida Tin. It was when she was pitching her idea of the Clue app. She noticed that when Apple came out with their tracking app or their to track sleep, to track steps, you know, there was nothing that was aimed towards women. And that, again, like is a huge population of the world that is not really being recognized. Femtech is most commonly associated with female sex toys. Why is this so? Well, sexual wellness is part of health wellness. Good sex will improve anyone's overall health. This includes physical, emotional, and mental health. If you're having bad sex, it can have consequences for the society. For example, you can have a higher rate of relationship dissolution or divorce. In the Philippines, it's more or less 50%. It can cause you stress. And sometimes for the relationships you have, uh, your unresolved feelings of dissatisfaction can lead to affairs, feelings of rejection resentment towards each other. Bad sex can also lead to cycles of low libido and erectile dysfunction and performance anxiety. As the orgasm gap phenomenon has shown, female sexuality has been severely neglected in our society. As such, it is not a surprise that a lot of femtech companies try to improve female sexual wellness and satisfaction through the use of technology, such as sex toys, education platform and application, and so on. Hi everyone, I'm Jacqueline and I'm one of the co-founders for The Headness and Good Vibes, which is a sexual wellness company in Singapore. And welcome to The Origin, meet my co-founder and partner in Good Vibes, Hi everybody, I'm Meryl and I'm the co-founder for Headness and Good Vibes, and welcome to our Insolence Day. We have a little bit of everything for everyone, from um, Good Vibes to The Headness Store, we have toys for couples, we have vibrators, a whole range of them, anal toys, to even keep to help with your public wellness and sexual health. On top of just retailing toys in our pop-up store, we are also holding a weekly Wednesday workshop for women to only around women empowerment, pleasure, and we are running quite a wide range of topics. And this space will be open until the end of March. So feel free to jump on online and to focus on the pleasure and sound. Singapore has taken the lead to host the rise of the femtech and digital health ecosystem in the region. Even though femtech is not yet a national focus, Singapore has crafted out policies that support the growth of the industry. Since the start of the pandemic, we have seen the mushrooming of femtech companies in the city-state that tackle various problems, from reproductive health, to sexual health, to mental health care. At the moment, we have, um, in Singapore alone, we have more than 24 femtech companies, which is actually half of what is available in Southeast Asia. So the presence is in Asia is small as compared to like America, as compared to Europe and probably even Australia, but it's on the rise. So working in a femtech startup in Singapore is interesting. Now the number one question that I always get is, okay, the first one is what is femtech? The second one is why? Why femtech? Isn't it niche? Oh, 
you sell sex toys, great. <laughs> what is the biggest challenge probably is the, the funding. Most of them are bootstrapping. The lack of funding stems from the lack of understanding and interest in the industry by male funders as well as prevalent taboo and stigma that makes scaling a challenge for these startups. Especially when it comes to investment, males view dominates the narrative, that it be institutional investors or angel investors. This is a space that women are not that much involved. So when you talk to um, institutional investors, generally male investors, as a female founder and talking about female health, female reproductive, everything that only women experience, ranging from period to menopause. When you talk to a man, for him to understand, to relate to that problem, the likelihood is very low. Things are starting to change, however. As more and more founders create new femtech startups, we see venture capitals and angel investors paying more attention to this sector. Yeah, we are, we are very bullish on the sector, uh, and it is a vertical that has traditionally been overlooked. Uh, and we think that it's gaining a lot of interest given the um, confluence of three factors. One is accelerated tech adoption due to the pandemic, uh, rising income, you know, changing views of women's health in Asia, and also we see an uh, adoption in the West and a lot of um, similar business models that is emerging in Southeast Asia and great entrepreneurs uh, tackling this, this, this area as well. Recently, Femtech Startup Ease, which is a digital one-stop solution for female and sexual healthcare services, has raised 1.3 million USD in seed funding led by Insignia Ventures Partners. This is the biggest amount of funding secured in the Femtech space in Asia to date. So, despite all the challenges we have covered previously, it seems that with the right company, with the right founders and product market fit, there is no reason to doubt that it is possible to get strong financial backing from various stakeholders. So women are a very powerful market and we have what we call the economy, which is women not only taking more ownership, but also wanting to personalize their healthcare. So we see, for instance, that 90% of women are the primary healthcare decision makers in their households and, and key influencers among their friend groups, uh, according to Frost and Sullivan. 80% of household healthcare spending is done by women. As a retail investor, there's no better time than now to jump on board the femtech train. The industry is still nascent, but estimates predict 22 billion US dollar of current global market size that might grow to a whooping 60 billion US dollar by 2027. We have yet to see any femtech company ready to IPO in Asia, but you should keep your eyes peeled on the strong players in the market. Another way to start is by networking and participating as an angel investor in a company that you believe in. But the first thing that we need to do within the femtech industry is to provide the education, because without the education, without laying the foundation, sometimes women don't realize um, that they are part of a, a problem or that they are part of a challenge and that they that there is an option to to get out of it. The aim is to again like make femtech more mainstream and so we hope that you know with femtech and the the spotlight that is on diving into the severity of our issues, our health, our well-being, our mental state, then we can move towards femtech being included into general healthcare.